on Elm Street Part 3. Freddy's just around the corner. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and welcome to Prime Time, bitch. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. Dream Warriors. That's all I know. That's it. <laughs> That's the only words to the song. <laughs> That's all I can remember. We are dorking out about 1987's A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors because it is Scary Movie Month. If you want to know more, it's October, so we should all be watching scary movies. But over at our favorite podcast, F This Movie, they have a whole thing about Scary Movie Month and you write reviews and every day. It's very, very fun. Join the fun. Uh, this movie is directed by Chuck Russell. The screenplay is by Wes Craven, who like dipped out for freddy's revenge number two and came back for for three and bruce wagner and frank darabont he's kind of famous uh you know director green miles shawshank redemption executive producer of the walking dead he's done some shit he has, uh, he has. and uh the stars heather langenkamp from she's from the first one returning as nancy we got patricia arquette robert england as freddy krueger uh jennifer rubin who was the girlfriend in the crush we did an episode on the crush i that's was like right that's what else she was in yes 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 There's yes a few movies she was uh Lawrence fishburne known as larry fishburne in this movie and we even have dick cavett and jaja gabor damn <laughs> it's got this <laughs> movie has every <laughs> this movie has everything <laughs> <laughs> Margot, did you see Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors in the theater? I did see it in the theater. I believe it was in Walnut Creek. Oh, at and the I festival? With, it might have been. It was mm -hmm. one of the bigger theaters. Yeah. And I went with my older brother who didn't like the movie, but he didn't like anything. I had a good time <laughs> with it. That's hilarious. <laughs> he was very he was very specific about things. Yes. And, uh, but but I but the audience was into it and it was really fun. Yeah, I saw this one. I this was the first Freddy movie I saw in the theater. I remember watching Same. Nightmare on Elm Street on video and I was terrified. Terrified when I yeah. watched the first one. It was really, really scary. And then watched the second one on video and I was not scared and I was very disappointed. And was very excited to see this one in the theater. And at the time, it was <laughs> my favorite of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And it is still like one of my favorites. Although I've been re-watching the, Freddy, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And one is really fucking good. Hot take, everybody. The first Nightmare on Elm Street is really fucking good. So... Maybe I like that one more, but this one is the most watchable, probably, of all of them. In my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. It's my favorite. It's the one I, I picked for us to do. We were talking about the series, which one we should take on. I think it's probably the most accessible. Like, you don't have to know the story too yeah. much. Yeah. Um, I think... There are times that it's uh, the fact that they use practical effects is effective. Yes. And there's times when it's really not. <laughs> True. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot to mention Patricia Arquette. Patri uh, it's like her first movie. Young Patricia Arquette is in this movie. I can't believe I glossed right over her. She's great, too. By yeah. The way. And yeah. For me, for the longest time, every time she showed up in a movie, I was like, hey, that's a that's the girl from Dream Warriors. <laughs> She runs up the wall and then flips over. Yes. <laughs> so if you haven't seen Dream Warriors, uh, it takes place, what, a couple years after the first one. Uh, they yeah. just, How they, old is Nancy? Yeah. Supposed to be? <laughs> um, they bypass the second one completely, which is probably a, the right choice. Um, and they just go right from the first one to this one. I, do they say it's like five or six? seven years after she has the the uh the streak in their hair like in poltergeist the yeah in poltergeist 
who am I thinking of? Joe oh, Beth, Joe Beth Williams. Williams. Yes. It's got the Joe Beth Williams do. Yeah. Like it's she... got that little streak of, of gray. Yeah. So, we're, so she's not a teenager anymore. You know, she's grown up since what ha- happened to her happened to her. But it also, it's kind of silly because she has like a baby face. Yeah. So. She, so in the first movie, at some point, she wakes up and she has the streak in her hair. So she got it from like being terrified, basically. But she doesn't color over it. She just keeps it. I guess she wants to look older. So, but she does have yeah. a baby face and amazing eyebrows. Amazing. They're great eyebrows. <laughs> was she also in Just the Ten of Us? Yes. I believe. Yes. Yes. Also, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. And she's been, I, I like, there's actually one I kind of like where they go back to the actors. Like yeah. The actors New Nightmare. Revis- yeah. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Too. I like that but- one too. But she's so she's a few years older. Her mom's passed away in her sleep. Her dad, John Saxon, is drinking in places and she's a psychiatrist. Yeah, she's she's helping these kids at a psych hospital. Yes. And then we meet these like this cast of characters, all these teenagers that are supposedly like the last of the Elm Street children. Because if you don't know, like all the parents who lived on Elm Street burned Freddie alive because he was a child murderer. I think some people have forgotten over the years that, like, Fre- this is the first movie where we get kind of, like, wisecracking Freddy, like, with the, mm-hmm. like, welcome to primetime bitch and all that. But I just rewatched the first one, and I'm like, you know, Freddy is really fucking scary in the first one, and he is someone who molests and murders children. So these, like, later Freddies where he's just, like, it's all puns and stabbing people, it's... um. It's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the thought of some not being able to fall asleep because it'll kill you is a solid premise. Yes. And I think I, I the first movie I haven't seen in a long time, but I remember it was very effective when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, I think they had more money. I mean, they made a shitload of money for the most. I saw it was yes. like 50 million or something. Yes. And they had like a tiny budget. If they had a little bit more money for the special effects, it would have maybe, I think those don't age well, but I think I like the thing. It's smart to me. Like you have this one location and they're all teens that are troubled Yes, and they all have a thing that they're afflicted with and and Freddie's coming through to get them. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And they, they give each of the kids a, a very clear personality trait and the, the thing that they are into so that you can find someone that you can identify with this in, in this movie. And then he exploits that weakness. They're going to die somehow tied to this thing that we know about them. Um, it, so we have like Kirsten, I think that's the Patricia Arquette character. And like her superpower in her dream is that she can like do backflips. <laughs> She's a... Uh, she's a nicer Mary Lou Red. She's a... <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, she could do. She's a gymnast. And then, you know, this other one. Um, oh, God. Kincaid. He's like, you know, he's like, he's really strong. And then we get Will, who actually tried to kill himself at some point and um, is confined to a wheelchair. But he's he's also like really into Dungeons and Dragons. So he's like, I'm the wizard master. And he can like actually stand without his chair and the one that was making me laugh though is this, the one named Taryn who's a recovering drug addict and she's I just, love her and by the way that's Jennifer Rubin and she's she's so lovely and I think she's great but yeah. she's like basically her superpower is, is that she turns into a punk rocker and then she has knives <laughs> but she doesn't know how to use them <laughs> this is a problem with the story it's like they get kind of a superpower but Freddie could beat their ass anyway yeah like, oh it, yeah none of them yeah. put up a, a real fight in no. any way except for Patricia Arquette yeah I, I mean, it's it's still. I mean, they have like Priscilla Pointers in this movie. Like, they have some really good actors. Yes. So it's got some gravitas to it, but it's like these kids are troubled, and the, the normal people don't understand what's wrong with them. But at one point, the, the line is like, "We've had two kids die by suicide, and the other one's in a coma right now." I don't agree with your methods. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> there's something wonky about their methods. Yeah, you can. 
you can kind of see why maybe the head of the hospital is like, mm. <laughs> like, mm, I don't think what you're doing is working. There's um, also uh, one. So one of the first kids to get picked off and we do like each kid gets their moment basically. So like, I think the first one is a kid named Philip who is a sleepwalker. Who's also apparently into making puppets, which is a totally normal thing for a teenager to be into. He makes puppets and, yeah, well. and it, but it's, it's really gross. Like this is one of those things that like sticks in my mind from the movie is he falls asleep because eventually you have to fall asleep and you're so vulnerable when you're sleeping. That's one of the reasons it's so scary. And Freddie like slashes his arms and legs and then takes his veins and uses them as strings. It's fucking gross. <laughs> this is a really gross movie. This movie is so gross. Yeah. And then he so he falls off a building. Yes. And then there's what's her name? She's the other blonde. Oh, Je- that's not Nancy. Yeah, we have Jack Je- Kirsten. We have Jennifer, I think. Yes, Jennifer. And she wants to be a TV actress. And she actually burns herself with cigarettes to stay awake. And she's hanging out in the TV room. And And then she watches the Dick (laughs) Cavett show with this gigantic remote control. Like they had on the show remote control. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) They used to be big, y'all. It it was called the clicker because it was like click. Yeah, it was huge. Gunk. Yeah. So anyway, she's watching Dick Cavett interview Zsa Zsa Gabor. Apparently he picked her as his guest because he said she was the dumbest person he ever met. (laughs) I love the shade. But she, so, she's also Zsa Zsa Gabor was like one of those like talk show regulars that for years people were like, why is she famous? Like her sister Ava was on yes. Green Acres. They were both beautiful. They were gorgeous in their yes. day, but they were both always in the talk shows. And the story is either Ava or Zsa, Zsa was on the Johnny Carson show in the early seventies, and they had she had a big white cat on her lap, and she was petting the cat. And she said to Johnny Carson, "Would you like to pet my pussy?" <laughs> and he said, "Sure, move the damn cat out of the way." Ah, Johnny Carson. That was how he was the king. He was such a such a dirty old man. He was. He, he wasn't, wasn't even old. He wasn't. Old no, he was. He was. Yeah, he was. He was kind of creepy. But anyway, so she, it's that. It's that kind of shenanigans. This movie, and they got this level of people because the first movie I don't think did very well when it was in the movie. It was like when it was on rental. Yeah, that everybody rented that. Movie. It was a like slumber party was, movie. That's where I yes. saw it for the first time. Was at a slumber party, and I was fucking scared when I yeah. saw it. So they got bigger people anyway. So that she watches him slash. Jaja, and then he busts through the TV screen, and then her head is busted into the screen, and he says, Welcome to prime time, bitch! And he crunches <laughs> her head in there, and Larry Kilthus, or Lawrence Fishburne walks in like, Oof, Ooh, this shit. looks weird. He's like, yeah. I didn't do it. It was she, like that when I got here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and he's probably thinking, like, would she like leap through the air? Because like the TV's coming from the ceiling. Yeah. It's very bizarre. But they will let us yeah somehow that's a suicide <laughs> but she dies. and then she and then jumped up in the air and she sm- left through the air and went head first into the tv in- like you do like, like, like we- you do yeah i mean it's just it's it's wacky uh then nan so then then who else then who dies then king k is it king k one of them is in a coma after oh, that so uh there is another kid named Joey, and he doesn't speak at all. And right, he has the nurse with the great tits. <laughs> he's got a he's got a crush on a sexy nurse, and this is where we get some like unnecessary like boob TNA. shot. Yeah, some TNA where she's just you know it's re- it's almost like right out of Fast Times. Like you always know how cute yeah. I thought you were, Joey. <laughs> like, you know they probably were like, all right, but we need at least one shot of boobs. Like yes. someone's got to be hot. Right. That was just, the, it was the 80s. This is like how they secure, they wanted her R rating or something. Yeah. So so she, yeah, so he's in a coma from her. Mm-hmm. And then. And we get another, came. we get another pun where he's like, feeling a little tongue tied, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Her tongue, she's tongue kissing him. And then her tongue like wraps around his wrists and his yeah. ankles. 
which you think would be part of his kink, but he's like, no, <laughs> he's, he's he's not into it. Seems he's weird. not into it. Yeah, he he needs a safe word. Is what he needs. Like he, he could get really right does. out of he could get out of hot it dogs. with a hot dogs. Remember hot dogs? <laughs> cacao, cacao. <laughs> so, so he's he's the problem. So Nancy and what's his and the and it's like the guy from that movie with Melanie Griffith who plays the porn star. I'm sorry, I can't remember it. It's a, hit, hit, it's a Brian De Palma movie. Yeah, it's a body double. Body double. That yes. was a filthy movie we weren't, we weren't allowed to see. Ooh, maybe that, I'll watch Body Double tonight. <laughs> Brian De Palma's hit or miss for me. Yes. That's that's one of the ones I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. But I always think of him because he's the lead in that movie. Yeah. Oh, he's Craig, doing the same camera here. Craig Watson is his name. Yes. So Dr. He's, Neil. Dr. Is, Neil's not very effective. No. He, He's doing his best, but like, and I think he likes Nancy. And so they're, that's one of the things I wrote in my notes because they, I think she's interning there. Like, he's like, we don't need some young hotshot here. I'm trying to help these kids. And then she shows up and he's like, auga. And like, instantly, <laughs> instantly they're dating. Like, they're going out for drinks she's like having him he's like cooking for her or whatever like they're instantly dating and i was like that's inappropriate but that's the <laughs> 80s for you well right exactly that's what they do is they couple people up but then they both get kicked by priscilla pointers like yeah y'all suck once again yeah he's, he's like you're gone and now this one's a goma <laughs> yeah you're not doing a very good job you're both fired right Right, because he puts them under, like they go, when they go under hypnosis and the, to its deep sleep stage, they can access their inner warrior, their yes. dream warrior. Yeah. And that's, and I do like that scene. I like yeah, it when this movie Jennifer is super fun. rocked out with her hair and her, yeah, and, uh, she's like, in my dreams, I'm beautiful and bad. Click. <laughs> like opens her switchblades. Like, I love yeah. it. But, you know, but sad to say. It doesn't work out. I mean, when they when so Nancy comes back and the kids, the kids that are remaining kind of get together to do another session to think yeah. to see if this is the time they could finally take Freddie out. Yes. And you're never going to, by the way. Can't you just move <laughs> away? I don't understand. But OK, so they go under and poor Jennifer Rubin, like she's gone instantly. She, okay. she has her not don't compete with why doesn't she have a machete or something i don't She's know got these but little switch blades like not even a good one that one traumatized me back in the day though because her whole thing is she's a recovering drug addict and so freddie's like right. knife fingers turn into syringes and the little holes on her arm turn into little mouths and they're like bah, bah. like i was like that shit messed me up when i was i would have been 16 when i saw this movie it fucked me up it's quite i kind of liked it well, it's, it's 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 an image that like it kind of it burned in my brain. It's burned in my don't brain. Do drugs, kids. Don't do it. Yeah, and then Freddie like sticks her with the needles, and he's like, "Oh, a rush," you know. Because <sighs> again, all with the the puns, the bad jokes. Yes, and he's he's doing like dad jokes everywhere. <laughs> and then there's the kid who's in the wheelchair, but in when he's in his dream state, he can be a wizard. He's in the and he's, he gets. He's a TNT. Yeah. Which everyone's into their thing. But he was just, you know, we're dorking out. Mm -hmm. we're, we're dork friendly. Yeah. But he, he tries to use his green powers, his green electric powers. I don't know. But that chair, when he brings out, actually, that one, I, I thought that was a clever uh, yeah, that then. chair that held the knives and the spikes on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But he, like, he can walk and then instantly he can't walk because Freddie says so. Yeah. He, he, he dies pretty quickly, too. It's so sad. It's sad. And then Kirsten wakes up in her house and her mom is like, hi, honey, you go to bed. And she goes to bed, tucks her in. This one I forgot all about. Yes. This was gruesome. This was like not my fave. I don't like the beheadings that, that happens, but like her, so her mother gets beheaded and her head is like yelling at her like, you ruin a date for me. Yeah, her mom is totally one of those like 80s, like single moms too where it's like she's like rich and bitchy and only cares about like finding a new man and she's like, like got a parents without partners like date sheet on her kitchen you know that yeah. refrigerator door 
<laughs> she's and yeah, just the whole like she's there talking to Patricia Arquette, and you can hear like a man going, "Where's the bourbon?" Like, <laughs> like turns out it's Freddie. It's Freddie, and he's like, "Where's the bourbon, bitch?" Because he's calling everybody bitch in this movie. That's his new thing. Hashtag dad jokes. That's a dad joke. See, so she's messed up from that, and then Kincaid has strength, but not enough to vanquish Freddy. And then Nancy, spoilers, by the way, these are all spoilers, but then Nancy basically sacrifices herself for the kids. Yeah. And Freddy kills her. Yeah. And then it's over. Yeah, there's there's also like... I'm like, what the fuck? Well, first of all, I they didn't need to kill off Nancy. Like, first of all, Nancy no. deserves better. And... I don't think it adds anything to the story because she actually doesn't really sacrifice herself because at the same time all of this is going on, uh, Dr. Neil and Nancy's dad are like digging up Freddy's bones because there's this whole other thing that I had forgotten all about with like a spooky nun that's like hanging around the hospital where Dr. Neil's like talking to the spooky nun and she's like, you know, there was this woman who got trapped in with the all the crazy patients and she was raped all weekend and then she had a baby and that baby was Freddy Krueger and he has his dad is a hundred maniacs and all this stuff. And it's you have to like put Freddy's bones to rest. And so he like he's digging up the bones and he's got holy water and he's sprinkling the holy water and that's what like kills Freddy and it's not even because um, Nancy did anything. It's because the guy was sprinkling the holy water on the bones. And then Freddie like burns up basically. And I just, I don't think Nancy needed to die for this movie. No, but that's what these movies are. Like all the kids die except for one. Usually. Yes. That's, it's usually teenagers and it's, you know, played by 20 somethings and it's usually one is left over to kind of look sad at the funeral. And then they do the thing that I super hate. And we talked about this in our aliens episode last week, which is pretty much anyone who survives this movie gets killed immediately in the fourth one. I did. I don't remember the fourth one, so I don't have to see it. You don't need to see it. Nope. Does it have Patricia Arquette? Nope. They recast her with someone Got else, it. but she they they all die at the beginning. Like they don't even make it to the real movie part. Um, it's frustrating. I also tried to watch Freddy versus Jason yesterday, and I lasted mm, I want to say forty minutes, and I was like, "That's all I can do." Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's real bad. It's, it's like me with Baby Mama. I, I have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that turns out like, 30 minutes 40 minutes in i was like this is they're good. all happy at the end that's all you need to know um yeah i i really i i i like scary movies i like horror i like kind of slashery movies i think they're super fun i could not get into freddy versus jason it's just it's not for me definitely has its fans not for me this one though i like very much i think it's super fun it's fun. I it's cheesy. It's it's cheesy enough so that I'm not that invested in the characters. So, yeah. but I do. I am mean, sad to see Nancy go. And I yeah. think Patricia Patricia Arquette is such an amazing actor. She like is. whatever whatever she's doing, she treats it like it's real. It's important, and mm-hmm. so you really you really feel for her and her conundrum and what she's dealing with. And she's great. I mean, all the actors are great. It's. Uh, I just think the special effects are a little cheesy. I mean, yeah. this is also 1987 when it comes out. There wasn't, you know, yeah. these slasher movies they didn't like to put a lot of money into. Yeah. I'm sure $5 million for a budget was a lot for the time. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. These were, they didn't like big budget on these kinds of movies. Um, mm-hmm. But then these movies would make their money back and then some. Um, I think. I've heard this before. I don't remember where I heard it, but so this was a new line cinema movie. And I remember back in the day, they used to refer to new line cinema as the like film studio that Freddie built because they made so much money 
of these Nightmare right. on Elm Street movies. And then they go on to like make all these Lord of the Rings movies and like win Oscars and all this stuff. So, but they're like bread and butter was movies like Nightmare on Elm Street and Nightmare on Elm Street, all the sequels, all the Freddy movies, because they kind of, I think they all make money. Like, they have a built in audience. Yeah, I there's mean, people there's, who love them. Right. And there's the people who love slasher movies and they this is sort of like a higher quality than most of them. Yeah. Uh, it's got Dokken had a music video <laughs> along with it. It was a pretty popular video, too. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fine. Like, it's totally if you're if you're interested in the Freddy movies, I think it's a good one. I think so, too. I um, it's not deep, but uh, no, I, I mean, I think. If you wanted to, you could go deep. Um, I mean, I would recommend maybe doing that more in the first one than this one. But there is this idea of, you know, um, parents who don't listen to their kids and, you know, kids being punished for the sins of the parents. And you could you could go as deep as you want. But I don't think this one is made for that. <laughs> no, no, they were they were going for a thing. I mean. It's fine. It's it's totally fine. I mean, I think it's fun. I think it's very 80s. It's it's very much a product of its time. I think that it's not too scary that it's going to give you nightmares. If this gives you nightmares, I don't know. You're, yeah, you probably no. shouldn't be around these kinds of movies at all. Yeah. I 80s horror movies are like kind of my sweet spot. Much like we've talked about how 90s like erotic thrillers are also my sweet spot. Like there's mm -hmm. something about like 80s horror that like clicks for me probably because i grew up watching that that's what i watched back in the day all the the halloweens and the friday the 13th and some of the other ones i'm going to name a little bit later um so i like stuff like that i think that out of all the nightmare on elm street movies this one to me is the most rewatchable the most fun because they give it's got a it everyone everyone who's playing everyone's playing their part they're all all in. I love that they give each like teen like a personality and something to help us connect with them, you know, so that I don't know when they die. We're not like, burr, burr. like, who's next? Like, there's something there. It's not just like a dude like stabbing them. It's I don't know. It's tied to some to part of their personality. That's I don't know. That's why I like it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very entertaining. It's very watchable. Very, and it's very watchable. It's streaming on HBO Max. It's only like 90 minutes. Yep. All the fr all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies are on HBO Max. So um, <laughs> that's why I'm watching them. So I'll be moving on to the next ones after this. But um, except for Freddy versus Jason, because I won't be finishing that. <laughs> My time is valuable. <laughs> I have I have other Nightmare on Elm Street movies to watch, so sorry, Freddy versus Jason. Um, do you have a favorite? What's your favorite of all the deaths in the movie? Oh, I like the television one. <laughs> Welcome to prime time, bitch. <laughs> I, I think it's hilarious. I think, I think it's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I think that one's probably the, one of the most famous from this movie. I, I think the puppet one is really creepy and gross. Yeah. But then the, the whole thing with the syringe and the little mouths and the arms. One messed me up when I was a kid. So I kind of like that one, too. <laughs> um, have you seen all of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies or did you quit after this one? I pretty much quit after this one. Like I said, I know the there's one that I can't even name, but I know I did see that one. New Nightmare. West brought every, yeah. New Nightmare. I liked and I like that fine. Yeah. But yeah, it's I I don't I'm not obviously an expert on the Freddy movies. Yeah. I like the first one and the third one. Yeah. I yeah. I saw the fourth one. I didn't like it. I didn't see the one after that. I did see New Nightmare. I liked New Nightmare. And I think that might be the last one. And then there's like reboots and things like that, which I have not watched because, no, I have the original. I'll just watch the original. Isn't there one with Jackie Earl Haley as Freddy? Yeah, that's the uh, reboot. 
which yeah, no. probably has people who really like it. But I like him. He's always good. Yeah. But the parts, he, the movies he's in is not, are not always great, but right. he's always great in them. Like Patricia Arquette. She's yes. just always good. Exactly. Yeah. Do you want to hear about some of the other scary movies that came out in 87? Yes, please. Okay. Angel Heart. Oh, yeah. It's filmed uh, Coney Island. Ah! Part of that's in Coney Island. Yep. That's the filthy movie. That's, that's one's naughty. It's very so naughty. naughty with Lisa Bonet. Naughty. She was, yeah, she got in a lot of trouble with Cosby. LOL. Because <laughs> he, he's, he's so moral and... Right. All about family values. Fucking creep. Uh, the Believers. Do you remember is that, that one? Craven? That is with Martin Sheen and Helen Shaver. And they, they, I think he's investigating some sort of voodoo or something. Remember, what I remember is she gets like a bump on her face. And then like the bump like explodes and all kinds of spiders crawl out of her face. No, that does not ring a bell. Fucking gross. We'll no, never w- never watch that movie again. Goodbye, sleep. I like, <laughs> see if you can guess what I am now. <laughs> I'm a zit. Get it? <laughs> Have we done Animal House? We should do Animal House. I love that movie. We should do Animal House. Okay. Yeah. More scary movies that came out in 87. Evil Dead 2. Great movie. I like that one. Ghoulies. <laughs> I don't know ghoulies. ghoulies. It was one of those like gremlin ripoffs with oh. like little. Cre- if you saw the like d- the VHS cover, you'd be like, oh, it's like a little slimy green thing that's like sticking out of a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave that there just and leave- just say no thanks. <laughs> Uh, hello, Mary Lou, prom night two. Yes. I'm like, that's a... <laughs> a wah pop a loom hop a lop bam boom crunch <laughs> I like that movie. I, and, it's a good movie. And I really like the first one with Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm a a big fan of the original prime, prom night. I think it's very good. Um, Hellraiser. I'm not into the Hellraiser you know movies. I'm also not into Hellraiser. And somebody recently was like, you should give it a shot and watch it again. And I'm not convinced. I I don't think Hellraiser's for me. I've watched clips. No. The second one played at my movie theater. And I, I remember watching parts of it. And I was like, it's not for me. It's But other again, it has a million sequels. People love the Hellraiser movies. It's just, uh, no, thank you. We love this one, The Lost Boys. The best. The best. We did That's an episode the best on that movie one. In 87. Yep. Definitely Michael. go. Michael. Michael. <laughs> best soundtrack. That movie's everything. It is. It's fucking dope. Uh, we did an episode on that one. You can go back and find it. It's We had such a good conversation about that one. Monster Squad. No. I like Monster Squad. I watched it with Calvin last October. I think it's uh I think it's super fun. Near Dark? No, sorry, it doesn't ring a bell. Uh that one's with Bill Paxton and it's directed by um Catherine Bigelow. It's really good. That one was on Criterion, maybe it still is. And then the last one, Prince of Darkness. A John Carpenter. It's a John Carpenter movie. Who's in it? Prince of Darkness. Let's Google it. I'm like, I should definitely see that one. I like eighty set I like eighties horror. It stars Donald Pleasance from that's not Halloween. Confirm it for me. Yeah, that's that's not gonna Alice Cooper. Sure apparently man, but... apparently Alice Cooper's in there. There you, you go. You watch it first and then you can tell me. <laughs> Let's, I'll let's report do that. I'll report back. Okay. Report that's, back. That's our movies. All right. So do you want to hear the top 10 songs of the week? This came out in February of 1987. Yes. Okay. Number 10. Lionel Richie, Ballerina Girl. <laughs> I don't even remember this song. Ballerina Girl. <laughs> you don't remember that? No. Okay. Number nine, I love this. Uh, Peter Gabriel, Big Time. 
love Peter Gabriel. I love that album. Peter Gabriel. Yep. Uh, here's another good one. Number eight, Beastie Boys. You got to fight for your right to party. They're the best. They're the best. They're, They're like it. my all time favorite. They are. They're what am I? Number seven, y'all. This was a thing. Bruce Willis, respect yourself. <gasps> More on Bruce Willis in a little bit. But yes, Bruce yep. Willis was so good in Moonlighting and uh, that we let him record an album and gave him a hit. <laughs> yep. Number six, uh, Linda Ronstadt, James Ingram, somewhere out there. Oh, from I love uh, that song. Uh, American Tale. Yeah. yeah. There's another one. I love this song. It's a ballad. The Jets, You Got It All. I was so into the Jets. <laughs> I love the Jets. They were great. Uh, this is not my favorite. I like Chicago, but Will You Still Love Me? Uh, no, thank you. Here's the terror I one won't, sometimes. I won't still love you. No, not the rest of my life. You can't have that. Mm-mm. Number three, awesome. Like, one of those one hit wonders, but they're fantastic. Georgia Satellites, keep your hands to yourself. No hugging, no kissing Is until it? you make me your wife. <laughs> oh, so good. Number two, Huey Lewis in the News, Jacob's Ladder. I love that song. Yeah. Not related to the very disturbing movie, just FYI. And number one. Bon Jovi living on a prayer, y'all. I I was into it. All my friends were into that album. It got to the point where I was like, Can we please put on Janet Jackson or something. I can't listen to Slippery When Wet. I was just gonna ask him all this was Slippery When Wet. Yep. Yeah. It was it was a it was such a hit. They were so popular. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, he was, he's very handsome. He's still very handsome. He's very he handsome. He looks great. Yeah. He looks good. Yeah. He keeps it up, y'all. Yep. Oh, hey yo. Hey yo. <laughs> what else are you dorking out about, my friend? I watched a documentary last night on Netflix, and it's about vaping. And uh, it's, it's on about my the list. Company Jewel. I found it very compelling. I was really, okay, I'm going to say something. Mm -hmm. Trigger warning. Those of you that are ex-smokers, I haven't had a cigarette in a very long time. Many, 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 many years. And at one point, I'm like, I really want a cigarette. (laughs) Because. Okay, that's good for people to know. It's good to know. Like, if you're trying to quit, it may not be a good one for you. Um, But it's about these two dudes and went to Stanford and two bros and they wanted to come up with a cigarette replacement that you can smoke but not have the carcinogenic effects Mm -hmm. that cigarettes have and it's about their whole process of coming up with a thing which turned into vaping and then how do you get nicotine out of it so that you get the hit that cigarettes give you but you don't have the smell and all the other things that people hate about cigarettes. Right. And so they came upon this formula and it was a thing called Juul and it's J U U L and it took off, but what they didn't understand, and it really illustrates this very well is how teenagers who hadn't got, you know, who had not picked up smoking as a habit their whole lives, like, cause their whole lives, it was gross to them. Right. right. It's, different than you and I were growing up where a lot of adults smoked. Oh my gosh. Not only did adults smoke, but when we've talked about this in past episodes, my high school had a section designated for smoke for my fellow students to smoke. The smokers quad. Yes. We had a smokers area at my school. Yeah. Yeah. So so did we, because the kids were going to smoke like Mm -hmm. they were. So they like at least put them in one area, but you knew the kids who went there, they came back and they reeked of cigarettes because so this is a thing like, and then they had these flavors. You could have creme brulee, you could have mango, you could have spice. And yeah. (laughs) And you pumpkin spice and you can vape and nobody can smell it. So Mm -hmm. kids could do it in a classroom and their teachers couldn't even notice it. And like one card cartridge was the equivalent of a pack of cigarettes. Oh my God. And the kids, you get so, and it's like four times as strong with the nicotine. Oh shit. So you get this hit right away. 
And then these kids are addicted to it. And they talk to like a couple of the employees that work there still cannot take those things out of their hands. Oh my They're gosh. So, yeah. And so then there's these parents and okay. It's Marin parents. It's mm-hmm. easy to make fun of. It's so easy to rich make Rich white fun. moms. Yes. From, that, you know, want to get behind a cause. But it's so funny with this topic because they came up with like, we got to stop this shit because kids are addicted and they're getting sick. Like these kids are have a hardcore addiction for something that's messing up their lives and messing up their lungs. And it's incredible to watch this. And so it made all this money. It was considered super cool. And then they had to that it's just watch it. I think it was really well done. I think the okay. episodes are actually, there's like three of them and they're not very long, um, but it's about the marketing. And there's one woman, if you watch it, she's, she's a redhead mm-hmm. and she works in marketing for this company. And she's like, what are you going to do? Your parents, parent your kids. You're not going <laughs> to just smoke anyway. And I'm like, these are actually people being really into parenting. This is you know, the parents, people that start a parents group. Right. Or into parenting. They tend to be people that really do care about kids. Well, also, like, the idea that they're going to smoke anyway, I'm like, that's not necessarily true. Um, a lot of kids don't smoke. Um, and or they drink. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, I, I've never smoked. But my sister, she said she knew from a very young age that smoking was going to be her jam. Like she couldn't wait to smoke. Same. And I, from a very early age, was like, that's gross. Like I would never smoke. So I don't know, man. There's just some people that shit, it is going to work for them. They want it. The thing was, is, and they had one person describe it. It was like a nicotine expert. And they were saying, if you have anxiety or ADHD, it's one of those nicotine is will actually like when you're in a hyper mood will calm you down oh it's maybe very... i maybe i should be smoking <laughs> i know say and i was like that's what it because i would say to people like, this actually calms me down when i'm really spinning when i'm really upset but it also this is the thing with smoke it did everything for me when i was sad i smoked when i was mm-hmm. happy i smoked like it was just always it was an excuse to leave work it was a, yes you know go outside leave a party you know yeah i'm gonna have a cigarette outside so yeah so th- it's if you have a, if you're trying to quit or if you have an issue that probably don't watch it because you really will after a while like oh man i really want to i want to fucking smoke man <laughs> <laughs> i don't i'm not going to but uh, I was looking up Juul online. I'm like, well, maybe e-cigarettes aren't so bad. But the the once we get the real, you know, it's going to take yeah. a while to get the scientific studies that are proper. Right. When they do come up with something equivalent to cigarettes that are not quite them, but that are really safe, trust us, there's going to be a bunch of us. <laughs> I'm just saying. I've already said if I make it to 75, I'm going to start smoking again. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I have heard this from other people, too, that are like, when I get old, I'm totally going to start smoking again. And I'm like, because <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, I guess, I guess, like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, that makes sense. I've also heard of like, you know, adults who quit drinking you know in their 20s or whatever and they hit like 75 and they're like fuck it yeah they start drinking again i'm like all right well i guess you earn you earn the right yeah i think like when you make it you put in your time i put in my time i understand what this is gonna do to me but the one guy like that worked like you could see him he's like yeah i can't get this out of my hands and he said when i was a smoker he said I never smoked in my car and I never smoked in my house because I hated the smell. And I was like, all I wanted to do when I was in my car or in my apartment was smoke. <laughs> like, it, like those when I was relaxing or whatever. But yeah, but he couldn't get that jewel out. And it looks like just a thumb drive, like you would put a USB yeah. drive. Um, but anyway, it was really, really interesting. So anyway, but if you're once again you're a smoker and you are you know trying to quit or it's triggering for you. Don't watch it. Yeah. That's, that's my warning. Uh, real quick, uh, what did I see? Uh, the Great British Bake Off is great this season. Super I'm loving it. So ha- I, I don't love who they eliminated this week. I don't agree with that elimination, but I <sighs> she love that. She was upset, and I don't, I don't think she deserved to be eliminated, but I'm so much happier with this season already. Yes. We're only like three episodes in, and I'm like, it's already better. Like, 
the challenges are they're giving them more time, by the way, to like actually bake things. Because one of the things we talked about this before on the show, too, they're giving them like no time for baking and then complaining that things are like underproved or underbaked or what. And it's like, yeah, because you gave them fucking 30 minutes to make a bread sculpture. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So I'm glad that they're like they've upped the time. For each of because I'm like, it doesn't impact the show. You're going to edit it anyway. Give them time to actually make some shit. And the people are great. Yeah, they and the people are always just so sweet. I like bakers. They said they just seem to be nice, very patient people. Very patient. Yeah. Um, Also, uh, the morning show bananas on apple you Plus. love the morning i show. love it it's so crappy i love it <laughs> i i love it i love it eat it up every week and then uh, below, uh bravo i below deck med um it's fun and then uh roni mm-hmm. we have the i is next week the last episode i believe that is correct Okay, and then we have the reunion, and they were showing clips from the reunion, and it looks like Aaron really get Aaron and Cy really get it in the reunion. Yeah, and Jessel drops some bombs. Oh shit! Yeah, so. I I think I texted you during Roni last week because we, we texted each other because we were both so upset. <laughs> like Jessel's husband. Look, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Jessel's yeah. husband is guy that collects points on his so yeah she's, on his credit card. She, Right, yeah. right. And so she they're both Indian and she grew up in London, I think, and they but they are they're here they're here in New York. They live in Tribeca or whatever. And they uh they have these two really noisy boys. But mm-hmm. uh she but his thing is that he likes to travel and he likes to collect points. So he will fly to Vietnam to get those thousands of miles and then use that for family trips. And he's buying, he bought these miles. It was a, for these tickets and it was like $600 first class. Yeah. He bought this during COVID airlines right. were offering a lot of special deals as a way to continue to make money when people weren't traveling. So he took advantage of these deals, but they do expire. So he was, using the tickets to get the points and it was going to expire so he had to do he needed to do it right so he's saying like and he just goes for 24 hours but he showed like because i'm like well that's because i'm thinking of you know sitting with the cattle and you know coach yeah no he's taking first class like there's a bed yes and there's privacy and he says he lands he go, he stays overnight he gets a sandwich that he really likes mm-hmm. and then he goes back on and to him that's relaxing yeah. like that's the whole thing and then like they go to disneyland or wherever they want to do for their family trip because it's just like i said thousands of thousands and Sai and aaron like just kept questioning him like and then he would answer they would look at the floor they'd look away like they weren't even looking at him and i'm no. like it makes total sense to me what he does and it's just a thing he's into but they try to make it look like he's sex tourism trafficking yeah. or he's cheating on his wife. And I'm like, you know, because he also lost his wedding ring. And it was like, you know, men without wedding rings, you know, men with wedding rings get hit on all the time. It's not it's like, true. you know, people it's in anyway. So they were just being huge bitches. They and were I being think, like, huge you and I, bitches. Yeah. And you and I were texting back and forth. I'm like, why are they dumping on this guy? He seems perfectly nice. And he and his wife trust each other like your husbands look like pigs in comparison uh it's because they're not really happy in their own marriages so it's easy for them to point the finger at other people it makes them this happens on love is blind too by the way like sometimes when married couples aren't happy they like i don't know they like to punch down i get they like go after other people's marriages and they're just like well at least we're not like jessel and you know because it's just it's just shitty mean girl behavior Um, right as someone who flew business class for the first time ever last month i fucking get it it's yeah it was like you get a bed and a TV with a headphone. You can watch whatever the fuck you want. The food is delicious. They keep they they're walking by with booze every five seconds. I'm like, I kind of get it. If you like flying, it probably is very relaxing. He gets some time alone away from his wife and kids. I'm like, I fucking get it. Yeah. I, and 
I think he really likes to go and get a sandwich like at this one spot yeah. and then he heads back and then like you use the people use points for everything yeah. and they, they're just I'm like who are these nitwits like one of them supposed to be a lifestyle influencer yeah and I'm she like doesn't she doesn't that? I know it's so weird they're just being like petty yeah mean bitches they're just picking on her I mean Jessel's not my favorite on the show either but I feel like they're picking on her and there's also a thing where like Jessel really wants to connect with them. She's trying and she, by doing it, she's making, she's trying, she's, she's failing is what's happening. So Sai's whole thing is that she grew up like really, really tough childhood. Like her, her mom was an alcoholic. She grew up really, really poor and Jessel didn't, she just didn't. And she's trying to, connect with Sai though like oh my uncle was an alcoholic like that can be really hard and Sai's like don't you talk about your uncle and compare it to my mom and blah and all this stuff and she's like I'm just trying to connect with you <laughs> stop yeah, being such a it. bitch she's such they're so it's so big and it's like and if they were funny or clever yeah that'd be one thing but they're just not so it's like if you're not even bringing that to it then yeah yeah they're so. just bitches they're just bitches. And you and I were really, I was like justice for Jessel's husband because it was like, and he actually went on TikTok and did a whole video. Like this was the deal I got. These tickets are like thousands of dollars and I got it for 600 bucks. This is how yeah. you can get one. And this is what the plane looked like. I'm like, that sounds amazing. And I have traveled overnight to places and I appreciate the points after. Yeah. Well, also I mean, just, it's a, I'm like, I don't know. It's, it's what he's into. Yeah, he's a dork, by the way. He's he's yeah. ma he's made it very clear that he's kind of a dork. And, like, who cares? Like, he's not bothering anybody. They're just being bitches. And their whole thing about, like, Jessel hadn't had her and her husband hadn't had sex in, like, two years. Because they have, like, two-year-old twins, by the way. Like, that's fucking exhausting. <laughs> like, it I don't know. It is very tiresome. And, uh... It's our and it's their business, not mine. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sorry. Aaron's like, oh, we love sex. We have sex. I bet you they don't. And yeah, well, it, it, I don't know. People who like talk that much about it and like make such a big deal out of it. That's a red flag. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, I just gave him a blowjob earlier. OK, good for you. Like, yeah. yay, whoopee fucking whatever. They're whoopee assholes. Do. Whoopee fucking do. They're such bitches. They're horrible. But anyway, that's what I got. Okay. Uh, I know that... Did you start watching Moonlighting on Hulu? I was going to, uh, but I decided to save it for tomorrow night. Gotcha. It's delightful. I've been waiting for this for years for Hulu to be stream Or for Moonlighting to be streaming somewhere. I guess there was an issue with music rights, which is why it wasn't streaming anywhere. It's finally streaming like Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepard had amazing chemistry. Like they are so fun together. Like Bruce Willis was such a fucking star, like mm -hmm. such a star. I tweeted it out. I was like, he, David Addison could have had all this. Like I had such a crush on Bruce Willis back in the day. And this just reignited that crush on him as David Addison in particular. He's he was so fun. He was so fun. He was great in that part. I mean, yeah. there's just nobody else I could imagine doing it. No. And they they had like such good chemistry. It's it is very 80s in that it's like, you know, a procedural. They're both like they're private detectives. It's like there was a whole like Rummington Steel was like another one where like with Pierce Brosnan, who also I loved Remington Steel too. The whole my will mother, they or won't they? My kind mother of thing. loved Remington Steel. She yeah. was so into that. She was so invested in that. Yeah, well, that's this was a whole genre of television back in the day with these like men and women like solving crimes together. Scarecrow and Mrs. King, <laughs> heart, heart to, to heart. heart. Yes. When they was, got together, it was murder. <laughs> Lionel Sanders or whatever his name was. It's, so, it's just, I, I really, really am enjoying it. There's, I've watched so far the first three episodes. Um, 
like Tim Robbins shows up, very young Tim Robbins shows up in one of the episodes. Um, I'm just, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's so fun. Um, I remember Whoopi Goldberg was in an episode. I think that's right. And they did a lot of stuff in the show that it was a one hour show, but it was mainly a comedy, which was pretty weird for the time. Um, they did a lot of breaking the fourth wall on the show where they would like look directly at the camera and say things. They did a lot of themed episodes, like some in black and white or the one where they do uh, taming, of, taming the of the shrew. That one was so famous. Um, they took a lot of chances on that show and it was fun to watch and I'm enjoying the rewatch. Did you start the fall of the House of Usher? No, that's also when we're done because yes. I'm talking about House of Usher on my other show. Yes. I yeah. love the House of Usher with Vincent Price that you're you're talking about. Yes. I can't wait to to hear that episode. I started watching it. I'm I like he you know, this is Mike Flanagan who also did um Midnight Mass and uh the house on haunted hill and all the it, it's super it's very entertaining and he's got all of his like regular cast people playing different parts i watched the first three it's creepy and sad it's like a haunted sackler family basically on this it's uh it's good i like it and then i also watched desperately seeking soulmate which is a documentary on Amazon about twin flames, which I think I texted you about as well. It's this, it's basically an MLM that turned into a cult. Um, oh, God. Yeah, these two people are married. They're like giving relationship advice. They start this idea of twin flames, like she's my twin flame and... And a lot of people start paying a lot of money to take their courses and sit in on their sessions. This is all online. Um, and then to make more money, they start recruiting people as coaches. Uh, to, and then those coaches start recruiting coaches and all of that. But there's this whole thing about finding your twin flame. And, you know, these people are paying all this money and it's not and they're encouraging like stalking behavior, like don't take no for an answer, like stalk your ex, you know, you're meant to be like giving them like really, really terrible advice. Um, a lot of the members were women. So like now they're like two years in taking all these sessions and they're still not finding their twin flame. So they start pairing them up with other people who are also signed up but because it's predominantly women they start convincing people like bullying people into having like gender reassignment surgery changing their pronouns telling them that they're actually men trapped in women's bodies it's a whole thing it's fucked up it is fuck it's it's also a sign of like what people will do when they're lonely and that makes yeah. me and that's it's really sad like these are the kind of people that prey on people who are hurt and lonely and sad and that makes me angry and it but it, it's very well done and it's on amazon and i think a netflix one is coming pretty soon too so if you want to See it before it comes to Netflix. It's on Amazon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's depressing, but but good in that you know the way that these MLM documentaries are. <laughs> I never heard of it before this, to be honest. But if I I went into like Twitter and uh, Blue Sky and typed in Twin Flames to see what came up, and there's all kinds of people. They're not talking about the documentary. They're talking about like, I'm trying to find my twin flame. So it's still a thing. People are still doing it, even though this documentary is out there and it's proven to be a fucking scam. But that's sad. Uh, yeah. And I guess that's that's it. I'm glad we did this movie, though. I'm enjoying my Nightmare on Elm Street rewatches. So thanks for humoring me, Margot, and doing this movie. <laughs> 
I had a great time with it. I, it is one of my favorites of the Freddy movies. Yeah, it's very entertaining. Where can people find you on the internet, my friend? So I'm at Brooklyn Margo for Blue Sky, Twitter, and TikTok. And I tried to post clips on TikTok, but a lot of them were taken down because Dokken has a problem or somebody oh. has a problem. So, I, you know, I tried to. Um, I think I got one of the trailers up there. And then I'm at Brooklyn Fit Chick on Threads, on Instagram, and that's my site. Okay. And uh, if you like the sound of our voices, we also co-host a podcast called What a Creep. Where we're talking about creeps of the past and the present. And then every episode, we end the episode with someone who's not a creep. Who are we talking about right now, Margo? We're talking about the movie Killer of the, Flo- Killer of the Flower Moon. Killers of the Flower Moon? Killers of the Flower Moon, sorry. And it's about the, it's the true story, true story about <laughs> these murders that happened in Osage County, Oklahoma, 100 years ago. The film stars Robert De Niro and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. And it's a, a case of, you know, colonization in America. And it's it's got everything. It's got murder, <laughs> history. It's, it's really- got sex. It's got it all, man. So if it's a good, I think it's a good primer before you see the movie, I think. Absolutely. I had never heard this story before, so I thought it was super interesting. Uh, yeah. If you want to learn more about Dorking Out, our website's working again, everybody. You can, you can go to dorkingout.com or dorkingoutshow.com. That one is now working, too. And Dorking Out shows on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, Threads. Facebook, Instagram, uh, it'll be on Blue Sky eventually. You can find me at the Sonia Show.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Blue Sky, all the things. My friend, thank you for talking about Dream Warriors with me. 